Last video, we finished up with an expression for the multivariate chain rule. In this video, we're going to start by picking up one more little detail, which you might have already spotted, and then follow this up by adding another link to our chain. If we have a function f of x, where x is a vector in which each term in x depends on t, which we can compactly write like this, we also have our compact form of the multivariate chain rule to go with it. What I hope you might have noticed last time is that our vector of partial derivatives, df by dx, is just the same as the Jacobian vector which we saw last module, except that we wrote it as a column instead of a row vector. So from our knowledge of linear algebra, we can say that df by dx must be the transpose of the Jacobian of f. The last thing to realize is that taking the dot product of two column vectors is the same operation as multiplying a row vector by a column vector. So finally, we can see that our old friend the Jacobian offers us perhaps the most convenient representation of the multivariate chain rule. Next, we're going to see that the chain rule still works for more than two links. To start us off, we'll work through a really quick univariate example where we're going to add in another function separating f from t. So we can say f of x is going to equal 5x, and we can have x of u now can equal 1 minus u, and u of t finally can be t squared. So we've got three functions, and we're separating f from t now by an extra step. Of course, we can just sub in each step into each other and find an expression for f as a function directly of t. Well, we say, well, it's going to be 5 of whatever x is, and x is 1 minus whatever u is, and u is t squared. So this thing goes to 5 minus 5t five squared. And of course, we can now directly differentiate this thing and say df by dt equals minus 10t. Or we can apply a two-step chain rule and say the following. So we can have df by dt is going to equal df by dx times dx by du, and finally, du by dt. OK? Now, subbing in for each of our terms, we just get, well, this thing's going to equal df by dt is, so df by dx is just 5. We're going to multiply that by dx by du, which is just minus 1. And finally, du by dt is just going to be 2t. So once again, we're going to recover the same answer, which is minus 10t. So we can see that this approach works for chains of univariate functions, and we could extend it out to as many intermediary functions between f and t as we'd like. But what about the multivariate case? Well, the chain rule does work here too, but we do just have to pay attention to a few extra details. Let's start by considering the function f of x of u of t again, where the function f takes the vector x as an input, but this time x is a vector-valued function, which also takes a vector u as its input. As the last video, the bold symbols indicate vectors. So u is again a vector-valued function, and it takes the scalar t as its input. Ultimately, we are still relating the scalar input t to a scalar output f, but we're doing this via two intermediary vector-valued functions, x and u. If, once again, we'd like to know the derivative of f with respect to t, we can essentially write the same expression as the univariate case, except that now several of our terms are in bold. We've already seen that differentiating the scalar-valued function f with respect to its input vector x gives us the Jacobian row vector. We've also seen that differentiating the vector-valued function u with respect to the scalar variable t gives us a column vector of derivatives. But what about the middle term, dx by du? Well, for the function x, we need to find the derivative of each of the two output variables with respect to each of the two input variables. 
So we end up with four terms in total, which as we saw in the last module, can be conveniently arranged as a matrix. We still refer to this object as a Jacobian, so we can now say that the derivative of f with respect to t is the product of the Jacobian of f with the Jacobian of x and the derivative vector of u. Notice that the dimensions of these vectors and matrices, as shown here, are such that this operation is possible and that they will return as scalar just as we expected. That's it for this video. I hope you're now starting to see the various threads of linear algebra and multivariate calculus weave together. See you in the next one.